<laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. So day when I'm all alone, I'll be thinking, I'm just thinking of you. And the way you look tonight, what is that song? Something. Hey, look, it's F F episode 1600. And 66. Oh my god, it's the 666 episode. Hey, wait a minute. This is like Mike's Daily Podcast. Is this where we get an intro from Mephistopheles? Mike's Daily Podcast. Here he is. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Mephistopheles. It's the satanic episode, my friend. It's got a one in front of it, though. Maybe that doesn't mean it's bad. 1,666. So the... Mike's Daily Podcast. Mythology surrounding that particular number. Well, not 1,666. Mike's Daily But you know the other one. Podcast. The Mark of the Beast, as it were. Yeah! Well, we got all into it back when I was a kid because of the omen. Remember the omen? Oh, wow. That was like, that was the big movie. I don't remember anything. Gregory Peck was in it. Yeah, that's right. And nobody knows who Gregory Peck is anymore. But when you're forgotten, like in the movie Coco, you die your second death. I'm rambling all over the place. I'm very Joe Frank this morning. My lovely lady friend and I were discussing Joe Frank. And if you don't know what Joe Frank is, just hold hold on to your hats. Because I'm about to play you a little something from it. But first, someone just walked in and we need to say a little hello to them as we are here at Cafe Anyway. Located somewhere in Podcast Rebellion Mod, the last place on Earth. Hello, my guys. It's Matt Abru, the big guy. And I have been joined by two other people. Oh. Yeah, this is Valentino, the back is attended. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Hey, Mike, we got a new guy on the Supreme Court nominee day. Yes, yeah, Supreme Court nominee guy. Uh, his name is Skew. Skubala? Brett Kavanaugh. Apparently, or is it Skubala? Brett Kavanaugh comes to us from the wonderful state of Washington, D.C. And here's today's Sure. He is 53 years old. Dun, 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 dun. And he's got uh, what? Nothing else to really say. So that's pretty much it. No, he's got two daughters. He talked a lot, a lot about his daughters during the uh, acceptance ceremony thing. And that's about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's a Republican. And he's a strict uh, constructionist person. Yeah, so that's... And I'm not going to go into it because you're going to hear it all day and good good for you. You're going to hear lots about it. The, the big news today, the 11th boy has been rescued. The final boy and the soccer coach are out of the flooded Thai cave. Yay. Do I have a podcast picture from that? No. What is the podcast picture? Hold on. Don't be so impatient. All 12 boys and their soccer coach trapped for more than two weeks deep inside a flood thai, flooded Thai cave have been rescued. A Thai Navy SEAL unit reported this. A successful end to a perilous mission that has gripped the world and you're sick of hearing about it right about now. So they made it out. You know what? I could talk about this till I'm blue in the face, which I'm already blue in the face, and that may not be a good thing. But nothing compares to the video. Hey, the most powerful storm is uh, Taiwan battens down for a super typhoon Maria. Taiwan braced for super typhoon Maria for today as airlines cancel flights, and the Weather Bureau warned against landslides and flash floods. And let's see, China Airlines, the Airways, two of the largest carriers in Taiwan, canceled scores of flights and warned that many more could be delayed because of the 
typhoon. There's all kinds of crazy weather. You know, I like to listen to NPR, though. I listen through Hawaii, Hawaii's, they, they call it Hawaii Public Radio, HPR, and I listen to that through my internet, and I love it because they talk all about, today we have a couple of trade winds happening, and it's going to be very windy, and it's going to be, oh my my, and it's going to be that now. Oh my my my. What else can I tell you As I have so many things I wrote down Oh there was this guy So Hugh Hewitt is this conservative talk show host That we carry on one of the stations I work for But before I get to that The number of the beast uh, It's a term in the book of Revelation This of course in the New Testament That is associated with the beast Of, Rev- of the book of Revelation In chapter 13 In most manuscripts of the New Testament And in English translations of the Bible The number of the beast 666 uh, As Well as Oh uh, It's not It's actually 616 What? This is written very bizarre This dang Wikipedia Uh, It's actually first mentioned in Revelations Chapter 13 Verses 15 through 18 In the Greek manuscripts So there you go It's like the only part of the book Of the Bible is the last book And I I was talking to my lovely lady friend About this the other day The book of Revelation Is how churches have kept In business It's how they get their money It's the money shot It's what they use it's like when you're listening to your favorite NPR station and they do their summertime drive and they go and they, they pull this one out. You use our services all the time. You listen all the time. Don't you think you deserve that we deserve some of your money for all the hard work we do when they pull that out? Well, Revelations is the same. Revelations is all about the end of the world and 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 bottom lines everything. So you're basically everyone at some point we're all going to die. But the whole concept of the rapture is we God in in essence causes us all to die instantly or causes a a, rec, a day of reckoning where those that are Christian ascended to heaven and the rest are left behind. And then the whole concept of the mark Come into the mark of the beast Come into play It's fascinating It's fascinating the whole The way the Bible is set up But it's that particular I mean Jesus mentioned judgment day But The book of Revelation is titled The Apocalypse of John And this number Is rendered in Greek numerical form As a Like an X And a couple S's It looks like Or sometimes literally as And then I can't even describe what this looks like to you Uh, 666 Is basically what it translates to Hexochoesis Oh I feel weird Like if I read this entirely to you Something might happen Like for example the count Might suddenly reappear on my show One Two No There are several interpretations Translations for the meaning of the phrase Quote, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, where the particular Greek word of sephisophato is used. I may have said that wrong. Possible translations include not only to count, to reckon, but also to vote or to decide. The, uh, let's see. So, yeah, 616 might actually be the. Number of the beast And Um Interpretations Oh uh, this Well now we go into all kinds of the His all right There you go at any rate It's a bizarre number That really stands out in the Bible Along With the 40 days and 40 nights The number 7 Comes up as A godly number in the Bible But Wow my gosh Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the beast Identified by the number 666 Represents the world's unified Governments in opposition to God 
The beast is said to have And this is the Jehovah's Witnesses now And don't forget Prince was one of those The, be- the beast is said to have a Quote n- human number And that the represented governments Are of a human origin Rather than, the sp- than spirit entities The number of the beast is said to identify Quote gross shortcoming and failure In the eyes of Jehovah In contrast to the number 7 Which is seen as symbolizing perfection Isn't that bizarre And there's something here about the Kabbalah as well Well Here Joe Frank is what I wanted to say Then Who has snake hips Is quite lean Blonde A pretty fair surfer Has a beautiful tenor voice Plays the pedal steel guitar and would take her with him to Mexico if she'd only let him. That's Joe Frank. Okay, yeah. That's what, you know what that is? That's, that's Joe Frank who was the inspiration for This American Life with Ira Glass, if you didn't know. Yes, that's true. And Joe Frank, I don't think is alive, according to my lovely lady friend who did a little research on this. Oh my gosh So the guy The stupid drunk British guy That sat in for Hugh Hewitt Yesterday morning Was so bad Every As we go outside a cafe Anyway where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcaster Valley I realize Now That this show Is going to sound Vastly different From any show I've done before Doing a little Technical glitch That I'm going to Try and have to fix Here in In the next Couple of minutes That I have Before I start Producing someone's show but this drunk guy comes on the so on talk radio you usually have some kind of song lead you back into the show from commercials and they call it a bumper so you might have let's say your favorite song is Van Halen whoa Janie's crying and so you play a little bit of the hook Janie's crying and it fades out well in this case it was Nina's 99 loof balloons so it's 99 loof balloons da, 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 da. and it's it, and so this drunk British guy comes on and he goes, Nina was a German pop singer, and I remember this song very vividly when I was just a little boy. I was really good. That's just the worst. And I think this guy, he wrote a book. I don't know. He was some to do. That's why they had him as a substitute. And he just sucked. And he came out of level level 42's. There's something about you, baby. So right, I couldn't. How can it be that a love dropped out of caring? And he comes out of that. And he had level 42. It was a big part of my back. And, oh, it just was bad. And I just wanted to share that with you. I could have shared a clip of that or of Maxine Waters talking about if you're going to shoot me, uh, just remember that a wounded animal is, you know, you better shoot straight because there's nothing worse than a wounded animal. And I played that clip for you, but I'm out of time. Sorry. All party over oops out of time. But next show, we will have the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Thanks for enjoying me for this rather uh, foreboding f- number of a show. Why, my gosh. Hopefully, it's not a foreboding day. I'm going to try and think positive. I hope you do as well. And that all things shall be well. Uh, despite the selection We'll find out more about this guy I have heard that at so, in some cases He has actually voted Not so conservatively And this might I make a very irate A lot of the hardcore Republicans Hardcore conservatives In the uh, Congress We shall see Alright let's go Dad. Bye <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.